Good evening from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well. Sending loads of love as usual. Um, what an FA Cup semi final. Strange man City didn't turn up for the first half. And a Sunday League schoolboy error by a big money goalkeeper. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Don't happen over here, mate. You gotta go. Literally. I ain't seen a howler like that. Not since I've been in the Cahays, if you see what I mean. But anyway, I'm gonna talk about uh Freddie Foreman's. You lot reminded me the other day. Uh, confirmed to me that Roy Hilda, in fact, is in Freddie Foreman's book. Right. Old Blue Eyes, I used to call him Frank Sinatra. Not literally, if you get what I mean, but his mannerism, so cool and calm, man of a few words. You know, when you're a young kid, and especially going through Wandsworth uh, from young young YP, uh, YP is very, very daunting. Because, you know, it's a different atmosphere completely. They don't, it's not the same thing. And screws as well. They, they, you know, even if you shout over the railings, they want to jump on you. You know, you can't, it's not that kind of thing. If I would have lived the life that I led in the 90s and all the way through to everything that's happened over the years, in those days, I think I would have come unstuck much, much more. I don't think I would have got away with all that. Well, maybe I would. I don't know. It all depends. Hard to say. But I know it was a diff that old era. Uh, they didn't put up with any silliness. There would always be someone to pull up a body, pull up somebody uh, for not doing things in the correct manner. So the, 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 um, the, the law was written, you know, by certain way prisoners were meant to act. Do you see what I mean? By the big lot. So I'm in the four up with Royal now. This geezer could spread a ball around from left to right in foot, outside his foot. He was absolutely magic. He was a forwards dream. So I had that in common with him because we used to talk football. I'm hearing way back in the day that he could have been a professional or semi-pro or something like that. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but anyway, he used to give me good advice and that kind of stuff. And then one of those mornings, this is how I came of age, you know, you've got to remember my first adult kind of like thing. thing, thing, thing. Anyway, so you know what I've told you about over familiarity and boundaries, right? So think about it. When I was first going to those places, I'm a career criminal. Uh, I'm just coming out of the y, y, YPs. I'm in the adults and all I'm doing is making friends with kind of a couple of years older than me, a couple of years younger, uh, from all different sides of the uh, planet, if you like. And we're talking about burglaries, robberies, where we're going to go next and that kind of stuff. This is how a man used to think. You're not thinking when you get outside the gate, you're going to think about going straight or anything like that. Planning jobs from inside there. So I used to walk around with a skeezer. Tall, man. He was white. We used to get on. But this is how it goes. Get too over familiar. Then they want to start prodding you and poking and start shoving and pushing and then think that you're going to be an easy, you know, mind that he talked to me, you know. But really, you was the one that was joking to start with. But when it fires back, it can often lead to violence and often, often does. And on this particular morning, them days in Wandsworth, right, you have to bring your bowl to the recess. Right, I told you about a couple of stories already uh, where Charlie would come up on your location one of those times. Um, right, so, 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 so in the morning, one of those mornings, when you're in a four up there on A wing, opposite D wing, you go, you have to get, go and slop out, empty piss bucket, empty um, um, you, the, the bowl of water, get a jug of water, whatever. Um, this case is next door that I was getting on with comes into the cell. I said, yeah, my name talks to me in the future. He says, da, 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 da. He go, don't get cheeky with me again. He was like he was coming for you from the day before. So I said, to Roy come back in from the recess with his bowl and put his bowl there on. And was looking at the, the thing and then the other geezer that was in the cell come in, in the cell as well was looking at the way he was talking to me. And they were like, Roy was like looking at me like saying, don't have that, mate, kind of thing. Or was he? I don't know. But it looked like that to me. So... I said to him, so you think you're talking to? Like looking up at him like that. And he got his hand and he grabbed you know, he put his hand on his mom my throat and tried to pin me. He goes, don't think because you're banged up with some gangsters that I'm going to do that you think. And I went like that. I went, what do you mean? And I just went bang and I knocked him clean out. And Roy Alden went like this. Roy Alden looks at me and he said to me, he goes, You've got power that you don't know about, you know. I've often thought that about you. I swear to God, oh, my mother's, um, Jesus was from uh, just outside London. Uh, but that was a funny one. And he always used to say to me after that, you don't know your own strength, you do. I think that 
It was my first fight in adult prison. Imagine that, just sharing that with you today. Thanks for reminding me and clarifying that Roy Hilda was what I thought he was, one of the greatest of all time. Love you all dearly. See you tomorrow.